Hey guys, welcome to another introduction to some of the new features in Cinema 4D R20. And my name is Matthias Winkelmann, I'm with Foam Studio in Berlin and I'm gonna show you a very quick making off of some of the techniques that we used in our short influencers. The technique we are gonna talk about in this one is uh, fields. Fields is a really amazing new feature in Cinema 4D R20, which in some sort of way replaces the fall off that you guys know from earlier features. Uh, the specific scene I want to talk about is the rug scene. So we see this rug which is moving and then it's growing over a surface in a fairly organic way. None of this was animated by keyframes. All of this is procedurally animated using fields. And I'll show you an example of how this works and how you can use that in your own stuff. I've got a plane here in Cinema 4D, nothing special about it. There's a certain point count, which will be important later on. I'll just select a few points and create a vertex map that we can use uh, fields on. So on the vertex map, you can already see there's a new option here, which is called use fields. And we click that and it adds a freeze effect, which sort of just saves the state of the vertex map as it was before we used fields. Um, I'm going to add a spherical field here. Here you have a lot of different fields you can use. And the spherical field will give us the option to actually control where the vertex map is influenced, you see? Cinema created a new object here, which is called spherical field. And I have this thing here now, which I can move around and the vertex map reacts to it. On top of that, I will create a new freeze effect, which you see in this menu. And I'll, add, I'll change that to add. The fields have different blending modes. So it's a bit of a layer system that you know already from um, texturing in Cinema 4D. Uh, so you can use them in different ways of adding, subtracting, clipping stuff and so on. In the setting of the freeze, um, we have layer settings here. I want to change to grow. Uh, grow basically, I'll change that to one and leave that on 50. Grow basically looks at a certain radius around it and um, applies a growing value. So you kind of see what it does. It starts from our spherical field, which I can also move around and then always grows outwards. To make this growing effect a bit more interesting, um, I want to add something into the radius. I want to add a shader field, which um, will enable us to add a noise to the whole growth. I'll adding noise, noise here and I'll change the noise to, well, let's leave it on noise maybe, and maybe I'll make it a bit smaller and I increase the contrast so you can see better what happens. If I play now, you can see it grows in very different ways. So we have this a uh, growing structure now on our vertex map and uh, what you can do with it is, is pretty much endless. Like it has so many different ways of, of applying it to different effects that it's really up to you what you make out of it. Um, one option we have, for example, before I show you what we actually did in that shot would be to simply use it in a MoGraph setup. So I'm using a matrix object and I'll, um, I, apply my matrix onto the plane and I apply the matrices to the vertex points, which creates something like this. And now I could apply a MoGraph weight map to this, which as well has the option of using fields. And in the fields, I can use a variable tag option and select my vertex map. So now the weight map, the MoGraph weight map is um, taken from the vertex map weight which means I have all the options of the growing structure and all the stuff I did in the vertex map before in my MoGraph setup now. Which means, for example, if I use a plane effector, which already immediately uses the MoGraph weight map and use visibility instead, I can create a MoGraph setup that is only visible in the structure that's growing on that plane. And I can take this even further. I can for example, use the matrix inside another one of the new features in Cinema 4D, um, the volume uh, builder and measure, and actually use the matrix objects to create my volume. So for example, if I create something like that and then mesh that afterwards, I'm doing it on a fairly low voxel count now just for, um, so we can play back it easily. Um, I actually started creating mesh structures that are based 
on the vertex map I created initially. So what we did in um, our film influences, uh, we basically didn't use a MoGraph setup or anything. We used the vertex map to displace the, the plane underneath it to create that rock. So as you can maybe see in the film, there's like a lot of small, small spikes coming out of it. And this was basically created by using um, a texture approach because that is just a lot faster and a lot easier to make. So for example, we put a displace underneath our plane and which now displaces the whole plane and we can give the displacer a restriction tag that takes into account the vertex map that we created. And now the displacer will only displace where the vertex map influences the plane underneath. And if you use the right, right textures now and, and, and the right amount of uh, points, you might have to make it a lot denser, denser than that. You can actually get pretty amazing results with this. And because it's still the texture workflow as well, we can add another layer on top with different noise structures and whatever, you know, you can just play around with it. It's, it's super inviting to play with. And the fields give you so many other options. There's like plenty of different things you can use. You can basically use all the previous fall of structures. Um, you can also use different MoGraph objects or particle objects. So you can use your particle systems within fields. Or, and you can add different effects on top. So for example, if I add a, a delay on top of the rig we have right now, first of all, nothing happens, but I'll do an add on this and let me see, and maybe I'll change that to spring. Um, and now if I change this to subtract, something quite interesting happens as well. Because basically the delay is, is sort of repeating the same growth um, but in a, in a kind of time shift, a few frames behind it. And if I'm, and because I'm subtracting it on our whole setup, you can create these quite interesting waves here. And that is basically all behind the technique in the shot I wanted to talk about. Uh, Fields is giving you a really nice base to, to create things like that rather quickly. Um, I hope you have fun with it and thanks for watching.